In this tutorial, we'll take a look at how we can automate the creation of a sequent piled wall. We'll also look at how to create the pile families themselves. So here, we're going to begin by creating the pile family, and then we'll move into the Dynamo script to automate the creation of the sequent piled wall. Let's begin by creating the pile family itself. So here I am in Revit 2024, but this tutorial could also be completed in an older release of Revit if you wanted. So I'm going to begin here by selecting New Family. In the Select Template File dialog, we'll begin by selecting Metric Structural Foundation.rft. This is the template file we'll use to create our foundation. The Family Editor will open up in a plan view. And I'm going to begin by going into the Family Categories. So here you can see we have Family Category and Parameters. And in the dialog here, we can see, of course, that Structural Foundation is the category, but we do want to also make sure that these are going to be work plane based. The other thing we need to ensure here is that the material for model behaviour is in fact set to concrete, because what we want to do is ensure that these piles will actually join together. We'll then click OK to the Family Category and Parameters dialog. Let's begin by creating the plan shape of the pile. So on the Create tab, we'll select the Extrusion tool. On the Context ribbon in the Draw panel, we'll select Circle. And we'll sketch a circle from the origin. And we'll just place this out at an arbitrary point. Initially, I'm going to set the pile radius to 250. And then, of course, what we want to do is actually place a dimension on this. So I'm going to go to the Annotate tab and we'll select Diameter. We'll place a diameter dimension on the pile itself. And then what we want to do is add a parameter to this. So let's go ahead and select the new diameter dimension. And on the context ribbon, we can go ahead here and select create parameter. For the name, we'll call this one pile diameter. Of course, this is going to be type driven. Notice that the data type and the discipline are hard coded. And we want to make sure that this is going to be grouped under dimensions. We'll then select OK. On the context ribbon, we can then select the green tick to complete the extrusion. To understand what's happened in the elevation view, we'll go into our project browser and we'll open up the front elevation. In the front elevation, you can now see that we have a reference level and you notice our pile is extruded just above that reference level. We'll need to create two further reference planes to control the embedment of the pile and also the pile toe. So to do this, we'll select the Create tab. On the Create tab, we'll select Reference Plane. And we'll sketch a reference plane above the reference level. And another one down here to represent the toe of the pile. We'll then add some dimensions to these newly created reference planes. So to do this, I'll select the Annotate tab. And then I'll select Aligned Dimension. And I'll place a dimension here to represent the embedment of the pile. And we'll create another one from the top reference plane down to the toe reference plane here. And this will represent the pile length. Let's now parameterize these dimensions. So we'll select this dimension here. And again, up on the context ribbon, we'll select Create Parameter. Again, in the Parameter Properties dialog, we can give this a name. So this is going to be Pile Embedment and we'll select OK. And this one here is going to be Pile Length. So again, we'll select the dimension, we'll create our parameter, and this will be Pile Length. And again, we'll leave this on a type parameter here, and we'll leave all of the defaults and click OK. What we now need to do is constrain the extrusion to these newly created reference planes. So I'll select my extrusion, and notice on the extrusion we have the shape handles, so we'll drag this one to the top, and we'll constrain, and we'll drag this one to the toe reference plane, and again, constrain. So now, if we go back into the 3D view, we can now see the pile. Let's now flex the family to check that it's going to work. So again, on the context ribbon, we'll select family types. In the Family Types dialog box, you can now see the parameters that you've just created. So we have Pole Diameter, which is 500. We've got the Embedment, which I'm going to set to 75. And the Pole Length, we'll set this to 10 metres. 
We can then click apply to make sure that the family correctly drives. And just to check the diameter, let's say that I wanted to increase this one to 750. We can now see that everything is working as planned. Finally, we'll need to actually assign a structural material to the pile. To do this, we'll select the pile. In the properties palette, you'll notice here we have a material under materials and finishes. What we want to do is associate this to a parameter. So we'll click the associate family parameter button and we'll select structural material. We'll now need to create two family types, one for our soft pile and one for our hard pile. So to do this, we'll go back to our family types dialog. In here, we can see that we've currently got no family types created. So we'll click on new type. And for the name here, we'll type in 500 diameter soft pile. We'll click OK. And then we can assign a material to this. So of course, this wants to be a lower grade of concrete. Now, looking in my project materials up here, I can see that I don't really have any adequate grades of concrete. So I'm just going to do a search here. So let's type in C12. And we can see here we have concrete C12. So we'll add that in. And we'll click OK. So now we'll create the hard pile. So we'll go ahead and create a new family type. So this one's going to be 500 diameter. And this will be a hard pile. We'll click OK. And again here we'll need to set another grade of concrete. So in this case, I'm going to just do a search for C40. And we'll add that grade of concrete into our project. And we'll click OK. And finally, we need to go ahead and save our new concrete round pile. So we'll click on the Save tool. Of course, you can save this anywhere you like. So I'm just going to save this onto my desktop. And we'll give this a name. So this is going to be Concrete Round Pile and we'll click save. Okay, so the family has now been created.